Praise the Lord. I'm coming today with today's scripture affirmation. Today's scripture affirmation is coming from the Gospel of Luke chapter 17. And I want to read the first two verses as it reads in the King James Version. And it says, Then said he unto the disciples, It is impossible, but that offenses will come. But woe unto him through whom they come. It were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and he cast into the sea than that he should offend one of these little ones. I want to read today and go over these verses, but the focus is in verse 17. This is our scripture affirmation for today because as we get the word in us, we can walk in the word. It's the word that renews our minds and transforms our lives and causes us to be conformed into the image of God's son, Jesus Christ, our savior. The more we speak this word, the more we we hear it. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The more we meditate on this word, the more our mind is being renewed and the more our life is being changed and we're being transformed. We're being matured in the word of God and we're able to walk in the will of God and receive the promises of God as we follow the principles of God. So what Jesus is telling them, look, in this world, look, there's going to be offenses that will come. There will be some tribulation, some trial, some temptation. We know all of these things are promised to us in the word of God. But he says offenses will come. There will be times that we will be tempted. and But it says, woe unto the one that brings that temptation. In fact, in the Amplified, it reads like this. Jesus said to his disciples, stumbling blocks, temptations, and traps set to lure one to sin are sure to come, but woe, judgment is coming to him through whom they come. So we want to look at today, you know, are we being a stumbling block to anyone else? Are we causing someone else to stumble, someone else to fall into temptation, someone else to get trapped um, into sin? Are we doing something that's causing someone else to fall? Are we even conscious of the fact that everything that we say and do affects someone directly or indirectly? Are we conscious of the fact that even with our family, with our children, with our co-workers, with other people in the body of Christ, with unbelievers, are we causing others to stumble and fall? Are we doing things that are causing others to get weaker in their faith? Are we causing others to turn away from God because we ourselves are blending in and compromising? So this should make us more conscious of the fact that the things that we do are not just about us, but it's about us being a witness in our walk. So when you think about it, if you a person that participates in certain things, whether it's conversations, whether it's habits, whether it's, you know, uh, the, the our surroundings, places that we go, things that we allow to be a part of our walk and a part of our life. Is it something that brings glory to God that's drawing people closer to God? Or is it something that is causing someone else to fall into temptation? Now, let me give you an example. If you're one who who drinks or who smokes or or does something like that and you know that there's someone around you that shouldn't be doing these things someone else that may be not even a believer somebody who doesn't really know God somebody who may be struggling with trying to quit are you uh, doing those things around them and causing them to fall into temptation making it easier for them to do these things are you are you in some kind of ungodly relationship or association where you are helping somebody else to sin with you are you uh, you know one who is participating in gossip and backbiting conversations that as you are speaking and gossiping that you are drawing other people into your conversation and they themselves begin to gossip and backbite and slander other people which the word tells us that we are not to gossip and backbite that we're not to lie on others that we are not to do these things but sometimes we thinking that we can do what we want to do we do things and we don't consider that we're causing others to fall that we're causing others to trip to to fall into temptation that we are a stumbling block we may be keeping somebody else from receiving christ because of our actions they may look at us and say oh well you are a believer you say you go to church but you do x y and z and maybe that is their very reason for them not wanting to receive christ or go to church or hear the word because they think that you're a hypocrite they think that we go to church and we're still the same that we're 
judging others, but we're not judging ourselves. Maybe it's that somebody around you is trying to get closer to God, but you are doing things with them that's causing them not to be able to do that because maybe they're weaker in their faith. Maybe they don't know the word or maybe they're not grounded and rooted in the word enough to overcome certain temptations. So when they're around it, it draws them in and maybe you're that stumbling block. So today we want to consider our actions, our words, our deeds, and our decisions because it can either draw someone to Christ, push them away, cause them to stumble, or help them to stand. But we have to make a decision based off the word of God. Jesus said, woe unto the one that brings those offenses. Woe unto the one that is that stumbling block that brings that before somebody and makes them fall and makes them um, uh, uh, sin against God and turn away from the word. And so today we want to confess, I will not be a stumbling block. I will not be the one that brings temptation to someone else. I will not not be a stumbling block to someone else. I will not cause someone to fall away from the faith. I will not cause someone to turn away from God. I will not be one that pushes someone away from the truth. I will not be a stumbling block today. So then everything that we say and do, we're going to stop first and we're going to consider our ways and consider our motives and consider who's around and who we're affecting because sometimes people think that their actions, deeds, and thoughts don't affect anyone because they think that they're doing things on their own that no one else is around and no one else is paying attention. Someone's always paying attention and everything that we do affects someone directly or indirectly. And so we begin to stop and to think, to be slow to speak and quick to listen, that we begin to turn away from sin so somebody else might be saved so that we're an example. A witness is not just someone who tells somebody that Jesus died and he rose. A witness is someone who lives the lifestyle, who walks according to the word of God, who obeys the kingdom principles, whose praise and prayer uh, show to others the relationship that our walk has changed, that people can see us and see what we used to be like and what we used to do and how we used to talk but that we've been changed and transformed. So we begin to examine ourselves. Am I being a witness or am I being a stumbling block? Are the things that I'm doing and saying, are the things I'm participating in, is it enhancing? Is it is it um is it glorifying God? Is it is it building the kingdom or am I tearing it down? Am I a stumbling block or am I someone who's helping somebody to walk this walk? Am I making disciples or am I pushing people back away from the truth? We have to decide today that I will not be a stumbling block. So everything I say and everything I do, I'm mindful that I am a vessel and an instrument of righteousness, that I am here for God's glory and for his good pleasure, that I am to be a witness. I have been called to be a witness. That's why we have the Holy Ghost on the inside. So I will not be a stumbling block today. If that means you have to give up a habit, if you have to give up an addiction, if you have to walk away from a circumstance, if you have to stop going to the casino, stop going to the bar, stop going to the drug house, if you have to stop telling lies, stop gossiping, maybe you just need to not talk for a while at work because maybe when you're talking, it, you're just prone to gossip or talk about or tear down maybe the management, maybe another coworker, maybe a customer or a client. So maybe sometimes we just need to ask God to put a guard over our lips. But whatever it is, we need to make sure that we're not a stumbling block, that everything we do, that we're mindful that other people, that, that other people are watching, other people are listening, and that what we say and do has an effect on them. So today, I will not be a stumbling block. I will not cause someone else to fall. I will not bring temptation to anyone else. I will not be a stumbling block because Jesus said, woe unto you if you are. So I will not be a stumbling block. So today we're standing for righteousness. We're walking in the word of God, the will of God. We're walking in love, walking in faith. We are walking in forgiveness. We're extending mercy to others. We're good stewards over what we have. We're making decisions based off of how we're led by the Holy Spirit. We're listening for God's voice. We're praying without ceasing, praising him continually continually. Why? Because we will not be a stumbling block. I will not be a stumbling block today. And so join us each and every day um, uh, from 6 a.m. to 6.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for the prayer line. Uh, the information is underneath the YouTube video. And also you can subscribe to this channel if you've not, if you want to be updated on notifications as the scripture affirmations are updated and uploaded Monday through Friday. And as the word of God is uploaded, as God gives it to me to share with you, we got to get the word in us so we can stay in the, in the word and on the word. And so remember today, you will not be a stumbling block. I will not be a stumbling block. We're going forward in the word of God today. God bless you.